a dashboard tricks and tips session. Um, so my plan for it is to um, do a little bit of demo um, of some of the basics, and then um, the rest of it will be kind of up to y'all of, of what you'd like to either talk about or hear from me or answer questions that you have about the dashboard or whatever else uh, that I can try to help with. Um, so without further ado, um, I'll, who here has used the dashboard before? And who here has not used the dashboard but is interested in doing so? Great. Um, so for the sake of the, the people who are brand new to it, um, I'll just demo a couple of the very basics to, to sort of give a little quick overview of what it can do and what it's for. Um, so the dashboard is a tool that we built at Wiki Education for our programs for keeping track of students in our classroom program. Um, but since then, it's kind of evolved into a, a beast that does a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Um, and the gist of it is that you set up an event like this one here, um, and you specify the time period that it's happening and which wikis it's happening on um, and which editors are participating, which you can either add the editors or send out a link so that they can join the event themselves. And then it will track the contributions that they're making on Wikipedia and other wikis um, so that you can get sort of some of this high-level statistics about how much they added, um, detailed statistics about the kinds of edits they were making on Wikidata, for example, or um, in the main space of, of a particular wiki or whatever other uh, specific uh, namespaces that you choose to track. And then you'll get a list of the articles that folks edited uh, with some tools for kind of digging into seeing exactly what they did. Um, and you get the, the sort of list of all of the, the participants and how much they've added to each article. Um, that's kind of the core gist of it. Um, so I will demo um, creating a new event really quick here. Um, so if you log in using your Wikipedia account, um, you can create an independent program, and that's the quickest way to get started. And if you've done this before, like I have, you'll also have the opportunity to clone one of your previous programs so you can just reuse the settings for it. Um, but uh, you'll get a choice of a basic program or edit-a-thon or an article scoped program. And so this is a, the kind of key choice to make at the beginning of, do you want to try to track all of the edits that are happening? Um, or are there a specific set of articles that you care about where you only want to track those? Now, if that's the case, then you choose an article scoped program, and then you'll be prompted to configure, hey, what are the articles that I care about that I only want to track edits to those? Um, and if you choose one of the other types, uh, the dashboard will attempt to just keep track of any edits that people are making on the wikis that you chose to track. Uh, so for the purpose of this example, I'll set up um, an article scope program, and I will uh, put in a quick title here. And we'll say that this is based on English Wikipedia, but we'll say we also want to track um, French Wikipedia, and so, or French Wiki books, perhaps. Um, so we'll add that, um, and we'll add a quick lorem ipsum description here. And another choice that you'll have is whether to make it a private program, which means that basically only you as the creator of it will be able to load the page in the first place. So in most cases, that's not what you want to do. But if it's an event where the fact of participating in it is sensitive um, and you don't want to sort of out people who were participating in your event, you can choose that option. Um, the downside of that is that you'll have to basically manually add all their usernames yourself because they won't be able to access the page to join it in the first place. Um, so once you've gotten that far, oh, wait, I have my Zoom thing covering up my controls here a little bit. That's OK. I'll move it around as I go. Um, so you'll configure the date. Um, so we'll say we want it to start yesterday and go through next week. Um, and you can optionally set some other 
um, dates in terms of like when exactly your event is happening, if it's in person, but those don't affect the, the tracking and statistics. And then because I chose an article scope program, uh, I'm presented with some of the options that I can use to configure the scope of it. So um, I can add a category, uh, and then it will basically look at all of the articles that are in that category on Wikipedia, and those will be the ones that uh, it will track edits to. Or I can use a, a template. So if there's a wiki project template, for example, you want to track all of the wiki project um, uh, Polish history articles, then you might find the template for that on the wiki that you're tracking. And that would be on the talk page of all of the articles that you care about. So you could add that template. Um, you can also use the tools page pile or pet scan, if you're familiar with those, which are um, sort of quite sophisticated tools that you can get more fine-grained queries to get the set of articles that you care about. Um, you can also actually just continue on without doing any of those things. Um, and in the current state, because I haven't configured any articles, um, you'll never see any edits that, that show up here because there's nothing that is in the scope of this program. But uh, I, as, as a participant, or you as the organizer, can either assign articles to individuals or you can go to the Articles tab and add available articles, and that will also contribute to the scope. So if you want to individually, one by one, specify the articles you care about, um, I always use Selfie as the example for, for all of whenever I do a demo. So um, I'll add that article. Um, so now this will try to track any edits only to the article Selfie. But I could add many more. and. Um, use a combination of these other tools as well, categories, pet scan, to uh, narrow down the set of articles or add to the set of articles I want to track. Um, so once you do that, you'll, you'll also see this enrollment URL, which you can send around, and then that will let people join the event. Or you can add people directly from the Editors tab, Add or Remove Editors. So I will add uh, one of my accounts here. Um, and now I've shown up on the list here, and, and I'll be part of the set of edits that gets tracked. Um, I'll pause here, because Peter has a question. I have a quick question, because I use the tool. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about the feature. Maybe it's already there. Uh, can we have a, like, automatically add any article that one of our students edits to this? Um, there's not currently a way to do that, except that if you don't use an article scope program, then it will just track all of the edits that are made by any of the participating editors. OK, thank you. Um, so um, there are some other features that are um, sort of uh, more esoteric, um, which I will um, briefly demonstrate here. Uh, so one of the features that we use uh, for Wiki Education's programs, which are um, university courses in most cases, is we have a timeline of sort of week by week activities. Um, and you can actually enable that feature um, on, on Programs and Events Dashboard as well. Um, so you enter the edit details, and, and I just demoed the timeline enabled. If I set that to yes, then uh, now I get this new timeline tab where I can week by week uh, add the, the set of things that I, that I want to happen that week. And I have to make some configuration changes to specify when the timeline is happening as well, if I want that to, um, to work. But uh, once I've done that, um, I can um, add content here. So I can add arbitrary um, uh, content. This week, we're going to uh, do our research. And uh, maybe the next week, we'll do something else. And then you can also assign training modules. So there's a set of training modules that are translatable and that are available. Um, some of them cover the basics of Wikipedia that are good for newcomers. Um, others are more specialized. Some um, people have added various uh, training modules that are specific to the programs that they're interested in. And it's possible to add new ones. We're actually working on a way to make it easier so that you can actually add new training content right from the dashboard. That's a summer project that I have an intern working on, but it's not quite ready yet. Um, but you can build out a timeline week by week like this um, and sort of specify the exact activities that you want if you want to use it more like a course management system. Um, that's not usually the way that uh, most people use Programs and Events Dashboard, but it is an option. Um, one other very uh, commonly used thing is enable account requests. So if you do this, then um, 
if someone runs into the problem where they're trying to create an account for the first time, but you're having a live edit-a-thon, um, you're likely to run into the IP limit where you can't create any more accounts from that IP. And so if you have that problem, um, if you use this enable account requests feature, then whenever a user follows that um, enrollment link, um, they will have the option of requesting a username. And so they'll put in their email address and their desired username. It will check if that's available and then put it into a queue. And then you as an organizer will be able to um, see a little alert that says, hey, someone for your event requested an account and you can approve it. So there's no current requested accounts in the system. But if there were, I could approve it from here and it would fall back to creating the account from the dashboard's IP. And so that would get around the, um, the IP address limit that you typically face with that sort of thing. So that's a, a handy feature if you're running live in-person events that you may want to take advantage of. And if you do that feature, then um, as soon as you approve the account, then it will go through MediaWiki to create the account and send the user an email with their temporary password, and then also at the same time add them as a user to the event. You can do this for all types of events, yes. Um, I guess um, one of the other things that I wanted to um, show off briefly here is um, the article viewer, perhaps. Um, so here's an example of. Um, an article that a participant in one of these events created. And um, not for all languages, but for many, um, we have authorship highlighting support. So if you're familiar with the who wrote it tool, this uses the same data so that you can see within this article um, which parts of it were contributed by which participants in the event. Um, so that's especially handy for classrooms, but it's also actually pretty nice for any time you're um, collaborating on an article. Um, there's some other statistics as well. If you want to see sort of the view counts for how many times has that article been viewed since it's been edited, the dashboard tries to keep track of that in an approximate way, and you can click through and see the, the full uh, uh, details on the, um, the, the page views tool uh, just to see, hey, this article, how much is it being viewed? Um, there are also um, some quite useful uh, tools from the Home tab here. If you scroll down below the details, um, download stats is a highly uh, good to know uh, section where you can download CSV data with many of the details of, of what went on. So if you want to, if you have data needs that are not easily met by the actual web interface, in some cases you can get what you need from here. Um, whenever you uh, any event that is live in the system will be part of one or more campaigns. And so if you're running many events and you want to actually not just see the data for that event, but you want to aggregate it across many events, um, you can create your own campaign to do this. And so here is an example that has four different programs that have been run. And so you get sort of the, the roll-up stats for uh, all of your campaign. Um, and that pretty much brings me to the end of the things that I wanted to demo. So I'd like to open it up to any questions y'all have. I'm going to use the fact that you have our dashboard open. <laughs> <laughs> to actually ask you, the problem between Facebook and Google is that facing, which is I haven't been able to see our uh, wiki source um, edits. I don't know why, but I feel like when I try to look on the, on the, on the projects, on, on the edits, I cannot seem to find on the on the general on the general one, Wiki mm -hmm. Alex general, general. So you have Wiki source. You said where? where yes, we added as one of the tracked. Mm -hmm. um, but then I cannot see the individual. I don't know if it's my own uh, incapacity, but I don't know where can I see the edits. That is that a good question. Um, so you know there have been edits on Wikisource. We is have, that true? yes. Okay. Um, I Many. see no tracked namespace for um, Wikisource. So that's why it's not going to show up 
um, on this on this first tab okay. here. Um, so you can specify individual namespaces, and that's how you get the data in this little section here. Okay. But um, without doing that, the place that you would expect to find Wikisource edits would be on the Articles tab. Um, and so if we just try to filter this, yeah, so this is a bug that I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah. And I, um, if you talk with me after, sure. um, I'll get as many details as Thank I can you. about why that's happening. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, there are mini bugs, um, and I, that's one of the reasons I run this session is to collect them from you. So uh, thank you for that. OK. So um, with my question, one of the struggles of Wikimedians is that we have so many tools doing so many things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and I, was, I, was, I was thinking, is there a way that we can track, say, specific um, text, hashtags, in edit summaries on um, the programs and events dashboard. And I know we have the hashtag tool, but it would be nice if we could do all of it in one place. Yeah. That's a great question. And it's something that's been on my radar for a couple of years, as in I know that there are some people that would find it useful. There are some campaigns that make heavy use of hashtags that go in edit summaries as kind of the means of, of tracking participation. Um, it um, It's a moderately different way of sort of collecting articles and edits than uh, what most of the framework is built around. And so it's not something that I've taken steps to try to implement. But it is definitely possible at some point. Um, and if, if you want to have a conversation with me about sort of like what you would do with it and like make the case for uh, why that's something that should be prioritized, um, I'm, I'm more than eager to hear you. And I have a second question. Yes. The second question is <clears throat> on, so thinking like an ed, um, organizer right now, when we organize events, uh, we have, OK, the, in this day and age, organizers are competing for the same um, volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so one volunteer goes for another event. They go for my event as well. And then when they edit, it pulls all their data from the other event for my event as well. Yes. Is there a way we could limit or like just have our events being picked up by the Programs and Events Dashboard tool? Um, so there are a couple of possible ways. There's no, uh, there's not what I would describe as like a, a great way to do that because the ways that those overlaps happen are complex. Mm -hmm. um, and, but if you're using an article scope program, that's one way because you'll only track the edits to the articles that you specify. Um, the other way, if you sort of discover after the fact that this one editor is also doing a bunch of stuff that you don't care about, um, then one option is to untrack individual articles. So as, as an organizer, I have this tracked column here. And I can choose any individual article that it came, showed up on the list. And I can say, actually, let's exclude that one. Uh, and, and so you can do that to as many articles as you need to, to sort of manually exclude um, some of the extraneous edits from your event. Um, those are the only tools that we have for it right now. And I know that that's an incomplete solution. But uh, I'm not sure what a better solution would even look like. So if you have clear ideas about that, I'd, I'd love to hear them. So is, is that only for articles or for any other namespaces as well? Um, this is for anything. So um, the way that the articles sort of listing works is that by default, it will only track namespa uh, namespace articles. But if you have specified additional namespaces to track, um, as, as in this uh, case, actually, these are all mains. Oh, no, category namespace is one that actually is being tracked here. So if there were any edits to the category namespace, in, in this example, um, those would also actually show up as articles on the list. And then you could uh, exclude those as well. So any of the edits that are contributing to these, um, like, well, the articles edited and uh, like the main stats here, anything that is contributing to that should show up on the articles tab. And you can untrack. I will bring the mic there then. 
Hi Sage, thanks for running this. I have two things. Um, one was that there were promised some tutorials, like maybe YouTube tutorials to guide people through different functions of the dashboard. And this has been placed as a request for a really long time. I'm not sure even you are the right one to, to answer that. But within the edu community, this was the request instead of us shooting our own very much tutorials to have one which is maybe in English and then we can just subtitle it. But this is something we are missing for a really long time. So that's the first question. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll start with that one. Um, so there are some tutorials now. Um, I, they're, um, they're kind of spread out a little bit on, on meta, but on the meta documentation page, um, there, there should be some links to several of them. So um, last summer, um, uh, an intern worked on uh, several videos. So we have, we have two videos um, in English that could be translated. Um, and I don't want to try to find them in the middle of this presentation because I don't know off the top of my head exactly where they are. Sweet. But I will, I will point you to them. Thanks um, a lot. I would say that we could have done a better job of like finding the right places for them. and. Documentation is always kind of like a, I always feel underwater with it, but um, uh, it's, it's, I know that it means a lot. And then the second question is, and that we maybe you may decide that we cover it later, but we had lately a problem because we run a campaign and then we have like an archive campaign where we archive the courses which passed so they don't show up in the year, but we can still track the history of all the things we have done. Mm -hmm. And even I add my colleagues to be like, organizers as well or they they are they are able to be at to the to be responsible for the campaign they are not able to archive the courses themselves it's somehow there is some limit to the function or is there some piece we are missing the, the, are there different rights in the in the dashboard so different people might have different rights so you might be able to add them but they still are not able to do the job is that possible it is possible so there are admin rights and then there are campaign organizer rights. In addition to the any event you create, you can add campaigns to. But um, if you go to a campaign, um, like in for this example, um, thank you for um, without permission letting me show off your campaigns. Um, in this case, um, we have two. Um, two organizers, and so either of these users ought to be able to remove um, an event from this campaign. Um, but I think the workflow would need to be, um, let me think. So, but to add a campaign to an event, like the archive campaign, um, a user would need to be uh, a facilitator of that, um, of that individual event. So I think, um, yeah, that might be the answer. But um, there's also an admin rights, and so um, there's a process on Meta for requesting those. And if you're an admin, then you can add and remove campaigns from any of them, and so that might be appropriate for you and your staff. Thanks. I'm bringing the mic. You've been waiting patiently. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. You're over on my left. Maybe. So. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I. I actually just wanted to respond about the hashtag and give you maybe two examples of where tracking a hashtag edit would be incredibly beneficial. Um, so one, I organized with one lib, one ref. Yes. And so that's a giant campaign, and we want to encourage people. We've actually found that lots of people do edits, but they forget to add themselves to the dashboard. Yeah. This is a really frequent thing. So if we could actually kind of isolate that, um, a lot of people have talked about, oh, if they had just known and yeah. things like that. Um, the second major thing is that hashtag edits edits are really powerful in terms of the kind of history of multi-year campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, so again, art and feminism is something I organize over the years. And so often when we do the introduction and show people and kind of trying to get them involved in the edit-a-thon, to be able to show them articles that have multi-year edits, and I look at the histories and I show them, and we do use that sometimes. Um, and so again, to be able to kind of pull that into the dashboard, um, people get very, uh, when they figure out that every single edit is going to be seen in the dashboard, because we usually don't scope articles. We kind of leave it quite open. Um, I have to go in and kind of take off people's edits, because what we find is somebody edits at the edit-a-thon their favorite artist, and then they go home, and they edit 
their favorite Korean pop article and they get embarrassed by that. And, yeah. you know, they shouldn't be. It, that's fine. But just, again, that scoping mm -hmm. would be really beneficial. So there's Thank my you. two... Yeah. I mean, that's it's the kind of project that I think um, is probably something that, like, um, an intern could tackle. And so I periodically um, mentor internship projects, typically several per year. Um, and I'll definitely put that, like, sort of in the hopper for possible projects for a future round. Absolutely. It, the work that I don't have to do is work that I love. All right, then uh, I'll go next. Uh, um, I have actually four issues I want to raise. Also, one of them is simply doubling, the, doubling back on the video tutorial things, which, as my research and Chinese research shows, we really, I mean, it's a really common requested feature. And just, you know, looking at, again at the, the dashboard page here, I noticed we don't even seem to have a prominent help button. Yes, there's documentation. I kind of know it means the same thing. But overall, and this is a, a general failing, I think, of the wiki interface, we are not doing a great job, you know, of, like, you know, telling people how to do things. We design cool tools, many tools, like it was said, and we don't really tell people what, that they exist, where to find them, and so on. So this is something that, you know, I'll just stress, we really need those video tutorials, and we need them prominently displayed, like, you know, help on various pages, click there, watch the video, how to use this, this dashboard feature, both for instructors and students. So that's just me doubling, dub, doubling again back on what I think is an extremely important point. We need videos because that's what people like. Um, Can I the, stop you there? I'll answer mm -hmm. the... So uh, regarding the help uh, button, um, I, I take your point. Um, the dashboard actually has a built-in get help button that we use on the Wiki Education dashboard um, that is hooked into basically like creating a, a, a ticket for our staff to, to respond to each time that happens. Um, but um, it's well beyond my capacity to uh, be fielding those kinds of help requests. And it would take more sort of like organizing of, of, of people to like be a, be a team to, to respond to those help requests in order for it to make sense to enable on programs and events dashboard. If there is momentum to, to do that and people want to try to take that work on, um, I'm happy to move in that direction. Um, but it takes, but the maintenance side of like actually dealing with that and, and the way that it's configured to work um, is currently not something that I could enable on, on Programs and events dashboard. All right. Um, the three other things I mentioned will be two are like a kind of feature request based on what I think I would like to see in the dashboard. And the last one is um, I'm going to repeat something you said because I think you said, you said something very cool. You demonstrated a cool tool, but you haven't stressed it enough. And I think some people here may not know it. But first, my two requests. One of them, I often run into the situation where my students like interact with members of the community and the members do not know that they are students because students don't often uh, they, uh, describe this on their user page. I'm going to add this as an activity, but what I was wondering is maybe the dashboard could have like an either automatic or like one click option for students to click here and if you uh, enable this option, each time you edit a wiki, a new wiki, you will have an automatically created, I know, user page with a notice that you are a student in this course. Because again, I really often run into this, people said this student, I mean, this person is making some trouble or not, they may need help, and then I come, hey, I am their student, uh, professor, and they say, oh, we didn't know because there's nothing in the system telling them that this person is a student in the course. So this is number one requested feature from me. Number two is, uh, I think, you, unless you uh, missed it at the beginning, or uh, sorry, I missed it. There is the you know the um, the image section on the dashboard where we can see uploads. I think it's called where we can see the images students are uploading, which is a nice nifty thing that I said that is no no uh, worth knowing about. But I think it's a bit under uh, under functional. The two things that are missing there is one I would personally like to see information uh, if an uploaded image is categorized or not because I commonly tell my students to categorize images they upload and most of them don't do this and I would like to have feel like I would like to know from this which images have categories. And the second thing is I would also like to know uh, which images are nominated for deletion because that happens and preferably be able to receive uh, alerts uh, uh, through the system whenever image my student uploaded is nominated for deletion. So this is my second requested feature, make this upload section a bit more informative. And then just uh, the last thing I mentioned that you demonstrated, but I think maybe people, some people may want to hear about it more. You mentioned modules when you're talking about uh, the 
time schedule and you briefly uh, uh, show people that they are modules, maybe it would be good to simply tell people a bit more about the modules and how they can be added because they are extremely useful and it's possible some people here may not know about them and you know this is like awesome tool you guys made. Oh, sure. Th that's it for me. Thank you. So um, regarding uploads, I hear you. Um, that's um, one of the early features that I built and it requires some major updates to like make it better and more in line with the rest of the architecture. Um, and it's something that at Wiki Education, um, we've, we've sort of like not prioritized recently, um, but it's definitely something in the long run I would love to um, make some real improvements to the way that it handles uploads. Um, and, and I have a bunch of ideas that overlap with some of the things that you just mentioned. Um, with the modules, the if you go to uh, training from the, the dashboard main menu, you can see sort of the index of all of the modules that exist. Um, the, the way that these currently work in terms of from the perspective of if you are interested in creating this kind of content um, is that most of the content lives on meta. Um, so it, on the one hand, it's tedious to configure. You have to go through some steps of creating special JSON pages to list all of the pages that are going to be part of your module and configure it like that. Um, on the other hand, um, if you are going through a module and you want to translate it, um, it's relatively straightforward to do so by clicking the wiki source link at the bottom and then you can translate it on meta using um, the, the standard uh, translation infrastructure on meta. And so because of that, um, if I am on the dashboard and I change my language to a different one that has translations, um, it will immediately um, show me the, the translated version of, of that training content. Um, but uh, I think I mentioned briefly, I have an intern right now working on um, making it possible to create and edit um, the, the structure of a training module from the dashboard itself so that the content itself of each individual slide will live on meta the same way it does now, but being able to sort of compose one will be easy without having to deal with the, the kind of like really confusing parts of, of doing that on Wiki right now. So um, I would say for people that are interested in creating training module content, um, I would wait a couple of months and then reach out to me and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so two more questions. Um, for the help uh, thingy that the gentleman mentioned, I just wanted to rehash that. I think it's very important. And I think in as much as we don't have like a, an, um, an intended fix for the programs and events dashboard, maybe an interim fix could be um, having the help button connect to some meta pages that have documentation around the programs and events dashboard, uh, maybe with some videos as mentioned uh, to allow people who want to use it. Um, and then maybe in the long term, think about a community of practice that would be helping with that. But maybe for the interim, just connect it to some pieces of documentation that you already have. And then um, the last thing I wanted to ask was, um, do you have a limit on the account creation? Because like, I think on the normal wikis, there, there is a limit, even if you want to create an account. So is there a limit on this one? So um, the way that it currently works is that if you are trying to approve an account that gets requested, um, the first thing that it will try to do is use your own account to um, create that account. And so if you happen to have account creator permissions on English Wikipedia, because it's configured to send all of them through English Wikipedia, um, which is um, not the perfect situation, but it's the easiest one with the, the system that we have, and it's been okay so far. Um, so we'll first try to do that, and then if it's unable to, for example, because you've hit your limit, then it will fall back to attempting to do that using a bot account uh, that has account creator permissions. Um, and so essentially, um, there is not a limit. You can, you can get around the, the six per day, um, and um, it's um, like to, to approve them, you either have to be the organizer of that event or you have to be a dashboard admin. Um, and so if you use this maliciously, um, then you'll probably get blocked on Wikipedia um, because it'll be traceable to your account that was the one that was 
creating them through that event. Um, but um, fortunately, we haven't had any abuse problems with that yet. And, and if we do, we can deal with it. If I may ask, uh, I've used the tool with Danish students and uh, I've translated it and I just love it. But uh, I also, perhaps out of vanity, would like to ask the domain name. Could I think this tool earns a better name? If it was wikiteam.org, I think it would show even more love to the tool. Have you considered any other domain or at least a wiki org for, for any wiki edu org for everyone in the world? Yes is the answer. Have I considered it? Um, it, it that's, one of the that's one of the requests that actually came up very early in the lifetime of this project. Um, and um, I, we did a little bit of sort of public brainstorming of, of what the name might be. Um, but um, one of the, the sort of limitations, which could probably be overcome with enough pushing of the right people, is that because it's hosted on Wikimedia Cloud, we can't easily assign it to an, a domain that's outside of Wikimedia Cloud or um, wmflabs.org. Um, it is certainly possible to run the same, like we could be running it outside of Wikimedia infrastructure, um, as Wiki Education does with our dashboard, um, which is on dashboard.wikiedu.org. Um, and we explored, actually, the, the possibility of sort of um, doing this in a way where we could spin up many um, like independent dashboards for whoever wanted them, um, and uh, it, it's sort of like it was a bigger, it was a little bit bigger lift than we were able to like pull off. So we explored it, but decided that we weren't ready to take that on. Um, but um, it's certainly possible for other orgs in the movement to spin up their own instance of it if they want a dedicated server that is going to only have their events and it's on whatever domain they want. Um, there, are no, there are no technical barriers to that. Other questions? Let me, let's see. Let me get the folks who haven't had a chance to speak first. Thank you. I just want to... I just have a, a specific question. Mm -hmm. uh, what will be the best way to create a dashboard that records edits uh, a day a week? That records edits what? Uh, that records uh, edits uh, one day at week. One day out of a week? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Like on a weekly basis or just a single day? Just a single day every week. Every week. Yeah. Um, that's not a feature that um, we have any sort of solution for at the moment. So um, the only way to do it would be to create a different event for each one uh, at, uh, the way that it currently works. OK, thank you. I just had a maybe maybe quick and dirty solution to one of the issues we raised that was raised here. How about adding a help button next to you know, report the problem that would lead to Wikipedia, let's say, uh, notice, uh, education notice board? You know, that's a, a place we could direct people. They can ask for help, and you know, it would uh, be community managed. And you know, adding a button with a link wouldn't be too much of a, so, you know, I think, too difficult thing to do. Well, the education notice board on English Wikipedia is not the right place for most of the events that happen on Programs and Events Dashboard. Um, it would certainly be easy to add another link here, but the documentation and the report a problem links are sort of the main ones that currently function to send people towards places where they can try to get help. Um, it, it would also be possible to rename those pretty easily, but um, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a like perfect solution to it that I can think of at the moment. Other questions? Anything that you want to explore? Well, we have 11 seconds left, so that's perfect timing. <laughs> Thank you so much.